Hello, welcome back. This is the last interview of Beaver Creek and we've got a whopper. We've got Luis Azevedo, the chairman and CEO of Bravo Mining. Luis, good to see you. Nice to see you again. Uh, the reason I say we've got a whopper is because you have got the best copper intercept of 2024. And even when you look back over the last five years, it's a top five intercept in those five years. Um, what was it? Around how many meters? How many? What percent? Well, we have about, we have drilled already about ten holes. Yeah. Uh, they all intersect those. Of course, there is two or three holes that were spectacular: eleven meters, fourteen yeah. percent; nine meters at nine and a half percent; five meters at six percent. It's very excited. It's a discover that we just done six months ago. Yeah, I look, I, and, and I, this is the beauty with this iron oxide, copper, gold systems, right? They they can produce some of the greatest mines on the planet, like Olympic Dam, for example. Um, but but there's more to this story than just great copper intercepts. There's also a PGM story as well. I, I guess, why don't we just set the scene as to sort of who Bravo are and what you're working on at the moment, and then we can dig into the different okay. parts. Well, we bought this project about four years ago, and we know that we had a tier one deposit. Uh, we bought with the assumption that there was about 5 million ounces over there. When you look at in detail, we found that, it, that the rodeo component was very significant. We also saw that it, there is a lot of nickel over there. And we drilled basically in the first year about 36,000 meters. And we moved this to almost 9.8 million ounces with relatively shallow intersects up to 300 meter maximum. And we got like 9.8 million ounces in total, distributed and inferred and indicated. And those grades are quite spectacular for open pit, 1.63 grams per ton in average. So it's a large deposit, 8.1 kilometers. So in the second year, we drilled deeper. We done about 40 holes over 450 meters. And we saw that there is a continuation of the deposit at the depth. In fact, in many intersects, the grades are getting better. The thickness are getting wider. So we are very excited. We have a tier one. Yes, is in the right place. No doubt about Brazil is pro mining. We have a lot of uh, infrastructure available in this area. It's one of those deposits that you see no complications, no issues in terms of ESG. So we are very excited. It's good mine that we are going to develop over there. And we got the surprise of the copper gold, which is, was a cherry in the cake. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so just to be clear, so obviously the, the, the um, resource and the ounces you're talking about there are obviously in the platinum, uh, sorry, palladium rich deposit with also, I think it's nickel, platinum and... Yeah, we have about 45% of palladium, about 30% platinum, and the remained part of the deposits distributed between rhodium, about 12%, nickel, about 4 5%, and you have gold as well. Okay. So it's like several uh, uh, elements over there, but they all can come out with the same proce process uh, plant. Okay, and tell me about this. Okay, so you, you've obviously got this very large very good high grade open pit really fantastic deposit in the pgm world um and then how how was the copper uh discovered well you always know that you, we are in the region of a possibility of eocg and the luanga itself is a magnetic intrusion so and if you look at the, the north of the Carajás, there is a large deposits over there. And when we got the data, we saw that there was a lot of copper anomalies around that, which was not related to the ultramafic rocks. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we were start drilling, we got this hole number 47 with 11 meters of uh, nickel, uh, with about 2% nickel, and five grams of PGM. Wow. But the, what people didn't pay attention, there was 1.2% copper over there, and copper is not connected to that. So we said to ourselves, there is a possibility of EOCG here, and we're still thinking that in the north part, there could be a possibility of a EOCG component as well. So what we did is we went back, look for how can we explore the possibility, and we, uh, we done a survey of EM over the whole property, 720 lines. Basically, process this, and this show up about 17 priority anomalies. The first anomaly that we 
we drilled was 300 meters from our camp, 600 meters from the Luanga deposit, and we got these fantastic results. And then we drilled more to the east, where the uh, anomaly was showing up, and we continually hit like other very nice intercepts. So we are in the process of right now going back to do uh, land EM, uh, do uh, more drilling, and the mapping in detail and do more geochemistry as well. It's just the beginning of the exploration. But the, I have to say, when you got those hits, you're incentivized to put more efforts on that. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, I think most companies wouldn't mind starting their exploration like, like you have. Um, how does this change the focus of the company? Because obviously you, you traditionally have been a, a PGM play. Um, you've now, like I said, discovered one of the world's best intercepts in the, in the last five years, this year the best one to date. Um, does the company now shift towards a development company in the PGM realm, so more of an exploration company in the copper space? No, I think it, we still very uh, early on the exploration of the copper. Of yeah. course, it, like it, we have done basically 120,000 meters over the PGM deposit. The PGM deposits is well explored. Yeah. Now, what we are doing with the PGM is de-risking the project, permitting the projects, working more on the metallurgicals. And of course, we are looking for better times on PGM price, which yeah. for sure is coming. But at the same time, we have this new discovery and we are excited to continue to explore, not just the five, but the other anomalies that we found as well. Yeah. So. We have 8,000 hectares for uh, explore this, and it, we believe that is just the beginning. Nice, okay. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see this sometimes when you get really good hits like this. Uh, are there other players now moving in, trying to pick up land around you? That, that usually happens. Oh, the, <laughs> the Karajaz has been occupied completely. Yeah, yeah. That is, you can buy some land yeah. over there, but it, apply and pick it up, it's very hard. Yeah. But I think it, uh, this, project itself uh, has a lot of merits and he, I'm pretty sure like the land pack that we have over there we're gonna bring more surprise than just that one. Well, why don't we talk a little bit about what the what the plan is with the exploration then for for the copper because I think obviously I'm assuming iron oxide copper gold deposits are usually quite deep in nature what, what's the depth of the intercepts that, that you... Oh, that's intriguing us this the whole uh, number of holes that we have done, we are basically at seven meters from the surface only. Seven meters from surface? Yes. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's incredible. But he, yeah. we believe that the source uh, of this this material is somewhere over there, and he, that could be deep. Yeah. Uh, and he, that is the goal right now, okay. to find out where the source of the OCG, because you're talking about an area that has huge deposits. Salobo produced 300,000 tons yeah. of copper concentrate, like Sosego, 100,000 tons. And it, our previous company was also very excited, Avanco. We sold that for $440 million back six years ago. Yeah. So we know that it, there is 40 uh, deposits over there in the hands of Fale and other companies over there. And we believe we can find one of the good ones. Yeah, okay. Well, it sounds like you're on your path to doing that. So uh, what does the exploration model now look like? What, what, does, what does the next the campaign look like in terms of the drill bit? I think it now we're looking now to do more geochemistry over yeah. the whole property. We are also doing more geophysics, but we're going to continue drilling T5 mm -hmm. and probably doing more boreholes in the other anomalies. And if they show up significant anomalies, we're going to drill it okay. as well. Okay, good. And what about funding in terms of how many meters are you looking to do? How, how well funded are you to, to carry out this campaign? Uh, we give ourselves 8,000 meters for this copper yep. exploration this year. We basically done something like uh, two thirds of that. Okay. So we still like two, three thousand meters to go for the year in the copper exploration. Uh, and the next year, we're going to see the results that's come out and plan more. And ex if we find more anomalies uh, from geophysics and from geochemists, we probably expand that. Okay. The good thing is this company is sitting in like 
26 million dollars in cash That's numbers great. of August yeah. and the, by the end of the year we still have 22 million dollars US in the bank so it's a very good treasure position to be in and our exploration next year will probably not spend more than half of what we spent last this year so mm. we still have very well funded to carry on so, so you're, you're anticipating less spend on exploration next year than, than this year? Yes, because the PGM exploration actually going to be completed yep. for okay. our view. So all of the exploration next year will just be on, focused on the, the copper? Yes, okay. and the PGM will going to be in terms of de-risking, yeah, metallurgical, so yeah. permitting, and, uh, and infrastructure. And what, yeah, okay. Okay, why don't we talk a little bit about that then? Because, well, actually, just, just on that, I mean... Uh, I think w most people, if if they would have got a result like this with the with the grades that you're getting and the whips you're getting, I think they'd, they'd be thinking, I want to do four times the amount of drilling that I did last year and put it all on the copper and, and really, you know, have two, three, four, five rigs up. Is it, you're not tempted to to go down that route and really really go after this? Exploration is a different game yeah. for me. It's not it's not the amount of work, it's the quality of the work. Yeah, and like we that. have like a, our president lives in the property. He is very careful about our treasure in our work. So I believe that he, he, done, he found eight mines in his career. He found Avanco. He was responsible for the success of Avanco, a company that we start with $200,000 and we built in less than a year and we sold three years later with 120% premium. I have to stick with his plans. <laughs> no, that's very responsible and, and a good use of, I think. Well, it's responsible use of cash in terms of shareholders and shareholders cash right i mean you don't want to just be drilling blind on on this stuff and you, you've got some early more some more early work to do so in terms of de-risking the palladium and platinum deposit um what are we expecting over the next 12 months to, to have? uh i would say that the first quarter of the year we're going to do the update on the mre resource mm -hmm. and it, i expected that by the end of the year we're probably going to be completing the permitting process. We're going to get the LP, which is the public hearing process, which is more like a social license, and then the engineer license. And then we have five years to build and five years more if we have to. So okay. permitting in Brazil is not an issue like many of the jurisdictions. And the, what I think is excited to to be in that region is the infrastructure. Yeah. There's three power lines crossing our property. We have paved road at the front of our office. Like we have as much water as we want. There is no communities close by. There is no like forest to, to cut. Yeah. Like, and it, there is skill labor over there. So like built a mine over there is not something very complex. Yeah. I guess leading on from that, obviously, if you're thinking you, you might be getting your permits next year and then you're basically, you've got five years to build and then potentially next, another five years, so 10 years to build that. Uh, I'm assuming if palladium prices, platinum prices stay as they are and you've done your economics, you won't be necessarily going to build this straight away. You, you're, you're going to probably need to change, see a change in the supply dynamics um, internationally. For, yes, for I think any company today that are in the PGM space are considering that. Yeah. But it, what I think it's very important to, to understand is there is a deficit already. So nobody expect that the PGM is going to be in the same spot of Nico, for example. Yeah. The future of PGM, I think it's looked much better in long term, especially because a lot of uh, North America, Canada, Mexico, and Brazil would like to probably de-risk their, their uh, PGM supply, and I think it, like it, there is no other deposit more ready to go than Luanga. Okay, so so Luanga is ready to go whenever the timing's right. Potentially, that's that's the point you want to get to. Um, and obviously, if we see a really big shift in that market, that'll be very value accretive. But I guess in the next twelve months, there's a lot of value potentially to be found through the drill bit, and that's that, that's really a key focus now, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Good. All right. So say we're sitting together. 12 months from now in the same spot at Beaver Creek. Um, what do you want to be able to tell me? Well, I hope we, I can tell you that we have a decent discover like we have on the PGM. And it, that I think we're going to probably excite a lot of our shareholders yep. because the grades are there. Yep. Now we look for the size. Yep. And normally you look, you find deposits, but the grades are rare. And what we got is spectacular. Yeah. 
No, good luck. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers. See you next year. See you then.